Hey, what's going on? Today I've got stocking ideas for a 55 gallon tank. Maybe you just got one for your birthday or you found one in a garage sale or you're just redoing what you got. Now, I've done a lot of 55 gallon tanks over the last you know decade and I definitely have some of my favorites. I have some of the ones that I think everyone should do at some point in their life and this is just a, a list of ones that I really I like, I guess, and, and things to try. It's like I can't know whether you're an African cichlid person or you're a plant person or something like that. So I try to work it in for everyone. At this point, I've kind of done it all to experience it. Oh, give me a taste of that. Give me a taste of that. And uh, hopefully you will too. So where I'm going to start today is one of my passions, and that is the planted live bear tank. Now, I'm not going to go into necessarily parameters and that kind of stuff, but overall a vision. What are we shooting for? Because these tanks are so big, and when I do, I ideas for a 10 gallon tank or a 20 gallon tank or whatever. We get a little more into parameters, but now we're scoping it out and going, well, there is so much real estate in these 55 gallon aquariums. What are we trying to accomplish? And I think with the live bear tank, what we're trying to accomplish is tons of color, lots of babies, usually live plants, or at least really good looking like silk or plastic plants, you know, kind of a centerpiece of, I guess, nature that's always evolving. And that's what I look for. So when it comes to mixing live bears, for the most part, you can mix almost about anything. Now, if you have sword tails and guppies, what'll probably happen long term is you'll get a bunch of really big fat sword tails and not so many guppy babies because they're eating them. But you might get a lot of sword tails. You can mix guppies, mollies, platies, sword tails, all those in the same tank. You can find other live bears as well. And as long as you have cover with live plants, and I like that a lot. They're going to live together. Doesn't mean all the babies are going to make it. And you probably don't even want all of the babies to make it. But the focus would be you can look in from across the room. You see a ton of color. And then you can add in some other things. If you want those neon tetras, you can add them in there. If you want those corridors, you can have those too. But I think the big takeaway is massive amounts of fish because libraries typically breed and lots of plants to help sustain that. Now you're definitely gonna have to do work. It's not just gonna live and do its own thing forever. And you're gonna have to do a lot of food, but that makes it easy of like, okay, well, I'll probably do some frozen blood worms. I'll probably do some frozen brine shrimp. I'm gonna get, uh, you know, a good dry food. Is it krill flake? Is it fry food? Something. And you're gonna get a lot of food going in there because there's gonna be a lot of little fish and there's gonna be a lot of nooks and crannies in all those plants or fake plants. And so you kind of attack it differently than, say, an Oscar tank that has one Oscar in it, right? So that's the vision is tons of busyness. Every day you look in, you see a new, uh, different fry. When things breed, this type of guppy and this type of guppy breed, and now you've got a new variation. You've never seen that before. That's fun. You kind of get to, like, just watch evolution happen. Now, this tank lends itself really well if you have hard water. If you're already on a well and you have a lot of hard water or you're just your state has hard water, this works out really well for you. If you don't... You're going to do a little bit of work, and that might mean having crushed coral as a substrate. We do that in all of our aquariums. And then adding some things like wonder shells or cecum equilibrium to add that calcium back to the water just because plants will be using it, and in general, they're hard water fish. So shoot for that as an overall look, and it's a real crowd pleaser. We do it at the store. We have done it in my living room before. It always captures people's attention of like, wow, this is looking pretty good. So if that's what you're looking for with that 55 gallon kind of a show tank, and that's the footprint it is, uh, give that a try. Next up would be what I consider an entry level African cichlid setup. Now, 55 gallons is a little bit cramped, not undoable. I've done it many, many times because at points in my hobby, 55 gallon tank was the biggest one I had available to play with. So the one I'm gonna recommend though is what I call the cookie cutter setup. And that, that stems way back from cichlid forum days and this would be where you pick strategic species that will look really good in combination with each other. So the one I'm gonna start with first would be a yellow lab acromis or a yellow lab, nice yellow color, black fins, right? Gonna stand out from across the room. The next one we're gonna to add to that is purple ACI. Now this fish gets a little bit larger and that purple and that yellow, as you can see, those are really gonna stand out from each other. Now from there, you get to add basically one more species and you get to decide, I think, between uh, a red zebra, which is kind of an orangey red color. If you can get cherry reds, they're actually pretty red. And that's gonna be kind of same size fish. So now you've got red, purple, and yellow, great looking color. Or you can choose something like a Demisoni, which will be black and blue striped. Say it's a little bit smaller, but uh, good fish. Now, 
When it comes to numbers, you're going to need to put in at least six of each of these. With the Demisona, I recommend 13 or more. They're, they will beat on themselves if you don't have enough to disperse the aggression. Now, you are going to be in a situation where you need a lot of filtration, probably a lot of water changes, and could you do eight of each? Yes, you could. Could you do 10 of each? Probably. Like it starts, you can really crowd in there, and when you crowd, it typically will bring the aggression level down, but it elevates the maintenance level. And so you got to kind of play to your strength. Are you really good at maintenance? Are you really in the hobby right now? Great, do that. Are you being pretty lazy? Great, go on the lower end side. The one tip I have is kind of get all of your fish at the same size and relatively within like the same month. Because if you just get three of each and then six months later you get three more of each, the ones that are in there and already grown up and bigger are probably going to beat down the smaller ones. And that's going to be a problem and you run into that where you have to kind of reset your aquarium. If you lose too many fish, let's say power goes out, you lose half your fish. Now they're just being really territorial and aggressive. You're actually better off donating that to your pet store, getting any credit you can and buying new babies again and raising them all up as a group. And uh, to really help with that, you can actually, you know, let's say you buy 12 each species and then you raise them up and you keep removing extra males. So you might end up with two males, four females of each type of species. You trade those back in for some store credit. Now it's paying for your food. And then, you know, you enjoy that tank until you're tired of African cichlids. Maybe that's three years down the road. Maybe you just want to change. Who knows? Maybe you're moving. But the African cichlid tank, very enjoyable. It's the closest thing that we can get to salt water. A lot of people that want a salt water tank but can't afford it will go with African cichlids because of that bright color, both male and female. Great combos. Next would be the Tetra community tank. And this is kind of the classic community tank because all Tetras can pretty much go together. I know there's someone on the internet going, not an exit on Tetra. What a fool. For the most part, if you were just to buy Tetras at a store, and you bought six or more of each type every time, it would work out. You got six Neons, you got six Rummy Nose, you got six Black Skirt Tetras, you got six Emperor Tetras, you got six Ember Tetras, you got six, I can't even think of more off the top of my head, but there's way more Tetras to choose from, and you can just do that. And that's a great way to go, with, especially if you have the youth in the hobby. So you got some kids or, or you're, you're bonding with someone, you go to the pet store like every weekend and they wanna buy new fish, that's a great one to go with because you can basically tell them, buy any Tetra, pick out a Tetra. Ooh, they picked out penguin Tetras. Great, we'll take them home. We got six more of them. They look great. They eat the same food. They school around. Why not? It's a it's a tank you can continually add to, not crazy expensive. A lot of these, you know, like, oh, I got lemon Tetras. They were $3 each. Oh, I got, you know, this Tetra is $2 each. You know, oh, I've got some Serpe Tetras. You know, you can always go and find new stuff, and that's what makes it so enjoyable. And... Yeah, you can put some Corydoras or some Cooley Loaches and stuff down there, but because you've got this base of the community tank of all these fish pretty much are on that docile level, you can almost add anything. It's hard to go wrong when you have a nice neutral base of fish in there. So uh, I really do love it. It's kind of a catch-all tank. I usually end up having one going in my fish room, and it starts with, yeah, we'll put those there for now. And then I change up a tank, and I go, well, yeah, they could live with them. And then, oh, yeah, oh, they could live with them. And as I kind of break down my displays, I end up making this pseudo display that I actually like quite a bit. Like right now, that's in my turtle tank. I have lots of uh, tetras, resboras, live bears, all living with my turtles in harmony. They actually breed up a storm and there's too many fish in there now, but that's kind of the catch-all. Like, go live in here. It's a 125-gallon paradise for you to do whatever you'd like. And uh, in a 55-gallon, great, great setup. Live plants, also a boon, but you could you know, I'm a fan of that perfect castle as well, that plastic decoration. If it's getting the family involved, that's what's important. And that's what I like this tank for is that every Saturday we're going to go out to lunch, we're going to buy a fish, and we're going to make a routine out of that. That's a great tank to do that. Next up, we have the quintessential angelfish tank. And what I mean by this is typically it's going to be planted. Typically we're going to pick one school of angels. So maybe we've got six to ten of Maybe they're silvers, maybe they're black angels, maybe they're koi angels. So I, I recommend one group to kind of, kind of school back and forth on that tank and then pick yourself out a tetra. Now, if you pick a small tetra like a neon or a cardinal, eventually they're probably going to start missing because they're going to get eaten if you don't feed enough. But if you pick something a little bit bigger like a lemon tetra or um, maybe even like a cherry barb, uh, black neon tetras, 
all of that will school back and forth, look good in front of green plants, and then you've got these big, you know, big angelfish, which are cichlids, swimming back and forth, and that is one of the quintessential like picturesque tanks. And it's a, uh, it's very mellow, I would say. So it's a, it's a mellow tank that, you know, if you're in a room, like if I had all the lights off and it was just in this tank, you would just be kind of mesmerized by the slow motion of the angels and then watching the schools of fish kind of evade the angels and a very chill tank very uh you know timeless in the hobby next up we have the opposite of that and it's the thunderdome the barb tank and this is you know they're gonna get shunned upon but if you've never kept barbs they're very fun we did it in the 800 gallon here with a bunch of tiger barbs and you can do like a tiger barber community tank where you've got glow ones, you've got green ones, you've got long fin ones, you've got normal ones, you've got albino ones. You can do that. That's a fun thing to do. Or you can just start mixing barbs. I've got cherry barbs. I've got tiger barbs. I've got checker barbs. I've got black ruby barbs. I've got gold barbs. I've got, and you can just be buying, you know, groups of six to 10 of all of these barbs. And you've got a very active aquarium. You're dropping blood worms in, water splashing all over the place. And but they're pretty much all plant friendly, so they're helping you out on maintenance. And it can be a fun one that not a lot of people do. A lot of people go, Oh, I had barbs once, they were too aggressive, but they're not too aggressive with other barbs. They're just a very quick fish, and uh, they do look really good. A lot of times people will be like, Wow, those tiger barbs look amazing! Like, well, you just don't see them, you see them in stores when they're young, and you don't see them like in a planet tank, in a big group, doing well, being fed well. They're typically when we see them, they're trying not to die at a chain store. Maybe someone bought some on accident. They bought them to live with their turtle and hopefully their turtle won't eat them. That kind of situation. Not like we put these at the forefront. I love these things. I'm going to make them look really good. When you do that, they do look really good. So uh, barb tank, super fun. If you've never done one, I recommend go start playing with all the barbs. I hope this is kind of sparked your interest in your 55 gallon aquarium and you go, okay, I get it. It's more about what can I do? What parameter can I give myself to make this fun? And know that very rarely is an aquarium forever. So you might love it for two or three years. Don't be ashamed when you've decided, you know what? I'm no longer engrossed in this aquarium that I've built. Rehome the fish to other hobbyists who will love them and then go, great, I was doing a library community tank. Now I want to do an African cichlid tank. And then maybe in three or four years you go, okay, I've done those. Now I want to do a nano tank and keep yourself active in the hobby and move those fish to a store or a hobbyist that will love them like you did the first six months you had them. And I believe that that is what I chase in the hobby. And a lot of people, they, they just want to stay in. They want to play with nature. They want to service that aquarium every Saturday. They want to go to the pet store and look at new stuff. They want to research. And that's what I love about this hobby. And a 55 gallon really lets that shine through, I feel like.